The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the July 20th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that off early and send that to Steve at TFNN.com. Of course, inside the subheading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Now, if you're in our Tigers, then, well, then any in every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Well, we've got a mixed bag. The mix goes like this. The Dow's up 260. The trannies are up 61. That's seven-tenths and four-tenths. And the New York Stock Exchange is up about a little over one-tenth uh, one of a percent. Other U.S. indices trading to the downside. S&P is off about three tenths or 12 points. One and two tenths for the Nasdaq 100, 189. Russell's off nine tenths, 17 points. A little over 2% for the semis. That's an 83-point move. Gold is off $9, trading out at 1972. Silver trading at 2509. That's a move of 1% to the downside, 29 pennies. Lights we crude up 44 cents, about six tenths of a percent to the upside. Natural gas up 13 pennies. That's a 5% move. And the 30 year treasury printed out at 12609. That's one point and 13 ticks to the downside. Leading the charge now, dollar wise, the upside. You've got market taxes of 14 bucks, 5%. Regenerant Pharmaceuticals up 11 bucks, 1.5%. Eli Lilly up 10 bucks, 2%. Johnson & Johnson, 9 bucks, 6%. Old Dominion, 2.3% or 9 buckaroonies. To the downside, it's Netflix off 41 bucks, 9%. Monolithic Power Systems, $29, 5%. Asthma Holdings, 26 bucks, 3.5%. Equifax, 24 bucks, 10%. Tesla, $21, 7%. So we got movers and we've got shakers. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. Let's start by taking a look at the market breadth out here. Let's start with the shortest time frame that we have. That's the 30 minute. We have it for both the ES and the NQ. S&P 500 right now shows that we are in positive or bullish market breadth. Uh, you have 164 instruments trading above the top of a 30 minute profile, 89 below. Let's take a look at what's going on inside the NDX 100. This will take just a moment to populate. We'll look at the upper left-hand side, 31 above, 20 below. So for the 30-minute time frame, market breadth for the ES Mini and for the NQ is bullish out there. Let's look at the other four time frames, those being 60 to 40 daily and weekly. If we take a look at the uh, daily time frame, weekly, they are bullish for the S&P. The 240 is bullish. The 60 is 240. So no turn has been detected there just yet from a market press standpoint. And the ASDEQ 100, uh, that is just the, so the 60 minute is got negative market breadth, 240 daily and weekly have positive. So that's where we're at with regard to market breadth for the NASDAQ and for the S&P 500. Let's go out to our first caller. It is John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hello. Do we have John? Good afternoon. Good ah, morning, perfect. Steve. Uh, yeah. John here in Philly. Perfect. Perfect. How are you this morning? Uh, very good. And I apologize in advance if my phone reception is poor. That's okay. And if it cuts out, 
I will end this call uh, po- possibly without notice. So uh, if that occurs, my apologies in advance. Don't move your head. Just keep in that exact position where, where you're at right now. you got a good signal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm doing my best, my friend. <laughs> okay, good. How can I help you? Uh, Steve, I'd like to just share with you and your listeners and reinforce in my own thinking uh, the topic of the NASDAQ 100 constituent rebalancing mm, okay. that comes into play Monday morning's open. Perfect. And, uh, Steve, uh, this, this topic, uh, at least for me and our conversation here, uh, will <clears throat> not uh, impact or I won't suggest it will impact uh, uh, the trend within the NASDAQ 100, but I thought I would uh, uh, share this with you in advance uh, so you've heard it, so that, you, uh, so that everybody can contemplate some of the implications. Sure, sure. And we're talking anyway, about seven see, stocks, right? Or five stocks? Well, I, Exactly. Yes. 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 Okay. I have uh, every day I've done an internet search looking for the reported uh, constituent weighting changes, and uh, either I am a very poor researcher on the internet, or uh, that information is being withheld to the public. Uh, it's one or the other. I don't know. Um. What I will share with you is this. If the constituent uh, weightings, if they're changed in a meaningful amount, uh, the idea I share is that from Monday forward, the NASDAQ index uh, and the historical NASDAQ index will be akin to oranges in the future and apples in the past. Meaning, Steve, if uh, we do the Fibonacci retracement calculations next week, next month, next quarter, that we will be dealing with effectively two different items. And as a consequence, Steve, it's important to keep keep in mind that, say, next week, next month, next quarter, if we get pullbacks in the NASDAQ 100 and we use our daily price charts and we do, say, Fibonacci support calculations, that sort of thing, those would, by necessity, be inaccurate to some extent. Right. Right. I agree with that. And, and, and therefore, I just wanted to uh, reinforce in my own thinking, share with you and your listeners that starting next week, that uh, we be ver- that we exercise caution in believing our technical calculations, specifically when it comes to calculating support levels based upon the rally that has occurred thus far, because sure, sure. we will be dealing with apples and oranges. Absolutely. Hey, John, we're about to go to break. You're welcome to hold on through that break, uh, but we're headed there right now. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. Uh, Dow's up 250, S&P up 15, NASDAQ 100 down 203. Uh, just as a follow-up, John uh, John uh, went ahead and, and hung up, uh, thought he shared enough with uh, everybody with regard to the rebalancing. So let me share uh, this with, uh, with you, John, and with everybody else as well. So I had that same thoughts. Um, you know, even this morning while in the shower or in the sauna or what have you, saying, you know, I've got to, I'd love to figure out. Uh, what those new weightings are going to be. Now, I started looking into this in the early part of, uh, of the week when, uh, when it was mentioned. It was either this week or last week. I think it was this week. And um, I, too, was doing some searching. So let me tell you what, I've, what I have found so far. First, I found an interview. I think it was done on CNBC yesterday or the day before, uh, but it was with uh, Dina Friedman, the CEO for the uh, NASDAQ. And she was really aloof with regard to uh, the interview showed Becky Quick asking her a question about the rebalancing because she wasn't familiar with it and then asked about how that might impact things. And she was very aloof with that. But what she did say is uh, that the rebalancing, if you really want to try to figure out what they're doing, you might want to try to investigate the details of the methodology behind the rebalancing for the NASDAQ. So I would uh, do each of you can do a search here and just put NASDAQ index methodology. And what you should be able to do is uh, pull up a, a PDF file. Now, I, I found that. Uh, this morning, I haven't had a chance to read through it, but uh, and, and that might not be the document, but I know that there is documents that are already printed and already laid out that talk about the annual um, methodology that's being used there, the percentages, one stock can't be more than X or what have you. I don't know what those rules are, John, but that's where I would start. Uh, looking. And that was just simply based upon her comment. Uh, and her comment was talking a little bit about that, but she was really aloof with regard to that. Um, so that's one element. A great uh, thought process by one of our uh, dinners, Mr. Bill inside the Tigers Den, one of my wingmen always let me know when I'm on the wrong screens. Right now I should be on a screen that shows the QQEW. 
So Mr. Bill said, you know, one way to resolve some of those issues, just some of them, right, because this doesn't represent the NASDAQ 100, but to try to get a feel for signals, and I agree with this, is to look at the equal weighted version of the ETF, QQEW. And that's what we do have up on our screen right now. So as we take a look at QQEW, might as well go ahead and do the analysis. What you can see is that there's going to be a TD9 count pattern that will confirm today. That'll confirm as long as price is able to close above, don't know whether it will or not, but as long as price closes above 109 64, you'll have a TD9 count top. Uh, if price doesn't uh, rally and get back to the gap that it created, you'll have a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator top. You'll have a three river morning or evening star. You'll have a gap to the downside. And so the issue for QQEW, folks, from a daily standpoint, is going to be that green oscillator and change line. Pulling back and testing that does not make it a top. That just makes it a retracement back to support. A close below that says all of a sudden the QQEW has lost momentum. The number to watch, 110.53 today, that number will change by pennies as price moves up and down, but use that as a pretty good guideline. The weekly chart for QQEW will complete a TD9 count top this week. That says if price takes out this week's high, the current high, and I don't know whether this will be the high come the end of day tomorrow or not, but right now it's 112.08. Price takes that out. When I mean takes it out, I mean closes above it the following week. Tells you about a strong upward momentum move for the weekly time frame. Monthly chart is the weak link out here because it doesn't show any sign of bearishness. It shows that it wants to go tackle 118.63. So how do we how do we make hay out of that? I think longer term, that's in fact what the QQs are telling us. But shorter term, and shorter term could be between now and December, um, between now and, and uh, not December, between now and October, we could see a uh, market in the NASDAQ that wants to move lower. Now, why that time period? Well, that time period, because... Um, Let's just pull this over here because of the seasonal pattern or a seasonal pattern, right? There's several seasonal uh, shoot. Whenever I do this, okay, I got to put this on a different. I don't know what what this is doing with my screen, but let me put this on a different screen. Um, we'll go back and we'll take a look at it. Give me a moment here. Shift screens, screens. There we go. So here, this is a the Nasdaq 100 over a period of 37 years. That's all the data that we have. The red line, the red vertical line, is today. Uh, it gives you a ton of information over 37 years, tells you the worst days for the NASDAQ 100 are Mondays and Fridays. Best day, Wednesday. If we take a look at the um, monthly chart, worst month, September. All the other months, not too shabby. This tells us that over a 37-year period, we are now in the unfavorable seasonal cycle. What's that mean? It just means we're in the unfavorable seasonal cycle. And if price starts taking out highs out there or taking out topping patterns, well, then that tells us that the seasonal cycle hasn't kicked in. Maybe it's a different seasonal cycle. Maybe it's only a 25-year seasonal cycle. Well, the 25-year seasonal cycle says we should still expect to anticipate a market to move lower into October. Well, maybe it's not a 25-year. Maybe it's the 15-year cycle that's out there. If we take a look at a 15-year cycle, it says we don't really top until next week, and then we move sideways, but basically we top we move sideways into August, and then we take a nice swift move down into the October-November time frame. How about a 10-year cycle out here? On a 10-year cycle, says basically the same thing. Says we top out here shortly, maybe the end of this week, early next week. We move kind of sideways, and that could possibly be the case. How will we know if that's the case or not? Well, now we go back to the NQ charts out here, as long as I'm on this screen. We take a look at the uh, daily time frame for each of the equity future contracts. So we do have rebalancing going on. But what we do have that we can rely upon are our TAS market profiles. So perhaps during this time period here, uh, where John uh, meant the uh, 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 where John was talking about the rebalancing inside the Nasdaq 100 and not being able to compare apples to apples because we have different constituents or different weightings with inside there, uh, what we can do is at least rely upon support and resistance levels, and that's where the uh, TAS market profiles come in. So we already took a look at the QQEW. You already know for me this whole week we've been talking about potential top for the S and P and for the Nasdaq, just those two indices at this stage here. But we'll go take a look at other ones. So now what we've got is we've got a new market profile, a new market profile that is attempting to form, attempting to pro perform because I'm using my advanced Doppler tool. So what does that mean? That means that uh, right now we know that the support zone for the NQ is between 15,586 and 15,681. 
If price closes below that, it signals to us, or at least two consecutive closes below 15,586, that would signal to us we likely have a change in trend. Now, we won't know this till tomorrow. We won't know if 15,586 is really the support level or not. This profile could go away. It has already shifted. There's also a new profile in the ES Mini. The ES Mini has resistance at 4609, and its support zone is between 4507 4524. Now, no rebalancing going there, but still you would be using that to identify the bottom. We have valid potential tops inside the ES and the NQ. You get bearish reversal candles today, and both of them on a daily basis will generate Rhodes momentum indicator tops. The uh, uh, Russell 2000 will go take a look at that. I believe that may also have a top. You can see there's the A to B equals CD patterns. <clears throat> Uh, that still need to be completed, perhaps. The uh, Russell has a target of 2030. The Dow has a target, the Dow Equity Future Contract has a target of 35,633. So far, the high, 35,516. Is that close enough? Mm, probably not out there. But if we switch over to my other charts, and I'm going to switch greens here momentarily, we get to the white background charts. Let's see what other patterns might be going on, if anything, for the Dow and the Russell. We take a look at the Russell 2000, we see wave number six, S letter G. Today is likely going to form bar eight of a TD9 count pattern. That says we could get a confirmed TD9 count top on the Russell 2000 tomorrow to potentially join a Rhodes Mintum indicator top in the ES and the NQ. The Dow needs a bearish reversal candle to basically sell, to generate and sell the people. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, uh, folks. So I found this here during the break. I, again, I haven't had a chance to uh, pull it back up. This is the NASDAQ Index Methodology, NASDAQ 100 Index. This is coming from the NASDAQ uh, website out here. Um, it talks about rebalancing throughout this, the calendar rebalancing and so forth. So this might be a place just simply to start with regard to um, with regard to trying to figure out how that rebalancing might uh, take effect out there. Um, let's get on to some questions, some additional questions that have come in. Uh, this one coming in from Nicholas, and Nicholas asking, where's the next level of support on the SMHs? Turns out, well, I'll, I'll, I'll show you that uh, visually in a moment. Here, we'll take a look at the SMHs. Yesterday, price generated a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. It was a bearish reversal candle, bearish engulfing candle. That confirmed that Rhodes Mintum Indicator top. And uh, Nicholas is exactly right. We need to understand where support is at out here. On a weekly basis, you can see you're going to get a TD9 town top completion this week. If we did get a bearish reversal candle, that would confirm a Rhodes Mintum Indicator top as well. And on a monthly basis, price is running into the swing point from January of 2022 that did 160 million, uh, yeah, 160 million shares were done there. This month, we're in the 20th. 76 million. This is pushing into a swing point with light volumes. The SMHs are signaling to an eye that they may have topped out here, but if they're going to top, they've got to bust through support. And the question was, where is that next level of support? And the reason I'm going to switch charts here is because there's a new profile that is formed or has formed. This one is formed. Support out here, 153.97. The low today, 153.91. So to answer your specific question, Nicholas, where's the next level of support for the SMHs? It's 153.97. You were correct earlier when you sent the email to me. You thought that the first level of support would be 155.94, and then the second level would be 152.46, and he was just simply looking at profile levels in 150.14. You were absolutely correct on that. It's just that now uh, what you can see, and you're referring to those old profiles that are in there, uh, now we've got new information for us. And that's the new profile. So the answer to your question was revealed by those new profiles that even I didn't have until we pulled up this chart here. And that's at 153.97. I would say if the SMH is closed below that, then the next price target becomes 149 and change. That's the weekly oscillator and change line. 140.04 is the top of the uh, weekly, I'm sorry, it's top of the monthly profile out there. So that's what I think that we're looking at. Watch 153.97. Nicholas, thanks so much for the question about the SMHs and support because that's going to be very helpful to helping us identify what the market's intent is. The next question coming in from uh, uh, Leonardo. This was sent in a couple days ago. I meant to get to it yesterday. My apology, but it was with regard to the queues. Leonardo had been in the queues. He sold that out. And his specific question is, do I see the TQQQ pulling back to the $25 area? Well, I can see it, but boy, before that happens, there's a lot of uh, support levels that have to fail. So why don't we do this, Nicholas, for your purpose, I'll take a look at the TQQQ, but we're really going to go take a look at the NQs out there and take a look at what is it that we need to be watching for today. But in the in, in, in the TQQ instance out here, that is confirming a Rhodes Mintum indicator top at this stage because of its gap to the downside, its next level of support is 4094. And that is, well, let me just make sure that there is no new profile out here. Let me just put this on my other screen. I should be on the white ones. Am I on the white one? I'm not. I'm on the black background screen. So let me uh, switch over to those. But here, uh, so there is a new profile. Okay, great. So on the TQQQ, the new profile, bullish in structure, is between the range of 43.22 and 44 bucks. So that is your support level on the TQQQs. Could this be a buy area? It could. It could. I'm not telling you to buy it though. But your support zone is 43.22 to 44 bucks. Even Stephen inside the TQQQ. I'll switch now over to those white background charts. Here in a moment, you'll be able to see the Rhodes Mintum indicator top, and we're also going to go take a look at the NQ charts. So here you can see the gap to the downside, and that there was a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal that had been triggered. Now let's go take a look at the NQ. Let's take a look at the. Uh, Let's take a look at the daily and the intraday charts out here. You can see on the daily time frame, you could generate a evening star pattern, three river evening star that would confirm a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. So what's that mean? 
That means a level of support here inside the NQ. Remember, there's a new level of support right there. We're looking at a new profile level. So only a close. I didn't show on this chart because I'm using my advanced Doppler tool on the black background charts. 15,586. That's the number right now to write on your pad of paper. Tomorrow morning, we'll know if that number is a solid number or if it has shifted. Let's assume it's solid and price closes below that. Then the next price target area is 15,344. That's on a five-hour chart. Five-hour chart has a road momentum indicator. Top price is below profiles. That is the target zone. The four-hour chart has a road momentum indicator. Top price below profiles. 15,479 is its target. The 120-minute chart negated a TD9 count bottom. Its price target is 15,676. You close below that. That suggests lower price. Lower price, 15,546. The 60-minute time frame chart has made its way to or almost to it's one to one A to B equals CD pattern. If we get a bullish reversal candle in the next 24 minutes, that would be at 12 noon on this hourly chart, you would have a Gartley buy pattern. And that would then suggest a counter trend rally up to about the 15843 level. Where I'm going with that is the red oscillator and change line. On a 30 minute basis, I've got nothing. Although if there was an A to B equals CD on the 60 minute, there certainly was on the 30 minute. So the 30 minute has a confirmed by the D point pattern. That says we should expect this rally to move up to 15,785. If I'm not mistaken, we saw the 30 minute profile was in a bullish mode, at least at the time. Let's see if it still is. Is this it? No, well, that's not it. I probably get rid of it. Did I get rid of it to not hog resources? I did. So I can't go back. I mean, I can, but I'm not going to at this stage here. I'm going to waste the resources. But 15785 is likely where price is headed to. And then if it, price can get above that, you've got a further rally, and that gets at 15843 area. So, Leonardo, do I see it getting back to 25? Those are the TQQQs. There's so much other work that has to be done before that takes place. So let's just take things one step at a time. Alton wrote in, and he wanted to take a look at uh, Intel out there. So let's go take a look at the charts for Intel. INTC is a ticker symbol. And let's also read Alton's question. And the question goes like this. If time permits, can you have a take a look? Can you take a look at Intel? We are. I'm, cons I'm considering adding some to get exposure in the semiconductor index. How do you see it? And where are the battles ahead? So the battles ahead. So price is trading below support. The battles ahead are 34.19, 34.54, and 35.18. And 35.18 is the big battle. The big battle, I'm looking at the daily time frame, Alton. And the reason why that's the big battle is price has been below the bottom of a bullish structure profile for more than two consecutive sessions. It's been for really a couple of weeks out there. On a counter trend move, that is the key resistance level, 35.18. A close on a daily basis above that level says it wasn't a counter trend move, and price moves up to 37.11. It's now a time to buy when you're below support on a daily time frame? I'd have to say the answer is no. You are above support on a weekly time frame. And support on a weekly time frame is out at 3301. 3301 is the top of its weekly profile. Where's its next battle? Its next battle, it would really have two of them. One battle is a swing point it's trading into. So the top of that at 3711 would be a battle. And at 4042, Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll finish taking a look at Intel for Alton and try to come up with maybe where's an area for Alton to consider adding or beginning a position inside of Intel. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're taking a look at the uh, seasonal stock chart for Intel. Uh, this is for Alton, who wrote in. He's looking to. Uh, this, the question was basically where, what's it? You know, where, where's a price level to uh, uh, begin a position inside of Intel? We know that Intel did form that TD9 count top on a daily time frame. We looked at that. It's all. It's it generated a sell the D point on a weekly time frame out there. And here we can see Intel has entered its unfavorable seasonal cycle as well. That began a few days ago, right around July the 16th. That unfavorable seasonal cycle runs into October 27th out there. So I just be careful here, Alton. You know, you asked me to give you a price. If I was going to give you a uh, price out here, we go back to these white background charts. I'd have to say I'd be looking maybe at the breakout level of 3068. But I'd really want to understand what's taking taking place at the hammer candle from June, July 6. Is price breaking that with more than 41 million shares? If it does, then you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside. We don't have that pattern right now, but we're certainly not at a level of support. We're below support. We're going into an unfavorable seasonal uh, cycle here, so I would be cautious with regard to Intel. So I hope that helps you out, Alton. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Lee B wrote in, and he wants to take a look at uh, Spidey, S-P-D-E, S-P-S-D-P-I. So uh, let's take a look at this. Let's see what this is, SDPI. It is the Superior Drilling Products out there. Perfect. So Lee's question is, currently long and would like your opinion on a short to intermediate term sell point. Okay, so short to intermediate term sell point. When we take a look at these stock charts out here for SDPI, that's for superior drilling products. I can see why they're superior. It looks pretty good to me. On a daily time frame, you're trading above the top of its profile. Uh, it has a Rosemontum indicator signal triggered. Um, until it gets a bearish reversal candle, uh, this thing wants to continue to move higher. You're long, so congrats there. And if you did get a bearish reversal candle on a daily time frame, that would then be your short-term signal that price is getting ready to pull back. Pull back where? Well, first we gotta get that daily, but the areas we'd be looking at would be the oscillator and change line and the profile levels. Currently 145 and 141, that's not what we're saying. If I look at a weekly chart, you can see a nice A to B equals CD pattern that's underway. That needs a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. The B point out here on a weekly basis did volume of 
like to tell you what it did. Volume of 647,000 shares when it was passed. When it was closed above, it had done 403, 363, 1 million shares. So we're going to say it's got that confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Again, you need a weekly bearish reversal candle to confirm a top there. And the monthly chart prices above, pro, well, above the center of its bullish structured profile. And Lee, you've listened to the show long enough. You know what I'm going to say next. When you close above the center of a bullish structured profile, you typically go to the top of that profile. That says over time, superior drilling products is likely to go tag 238. Do I don't see any sign of any kind of a topping pattern here for SDPI and uh, your above resistance area is the only level of resistance that is left for me to take a look at is at the 238 area. On a consecutive uh, days up and down out here, you are in uh, looks like day number four to the upside. We've seen as many as six out here recently. So we should see some type of pullback that begins, I'd say, by Monday or Tuesday of next week out there. So, LB, thanks so much for writing in. I guess lastly, I just see if this does have a seasonal pattern. Uh, it's well, Certainly it does. I don't know whether we have the seasonal data, SDPI. That's really what I was trying to say. I just didn't do a good job of it. But it does have it. So let's take a look. How much do we have? How many years? We have nine full years. And uh, this is kind of in this unfavorable seasonal cycle that typically lasts through about the uh, August time frame. But when we took a look at that stock chart, it doesn't give rats patootie about that seasonal pattern because that's not the pattern that's in right now. So we'll just ignore superior drilling products with regard to its seasonal patterns out there because it just doesn't like those. All right. Next question coming in from Bob in Spokane inside the Tiger's Den. Bob wants to take a look at Petra. P-T-R-A is the ticker symbol. Actually, let's actually find out what the name of that is. That is Proterra. Hey, not too far off. So let's take a look at Proterra. Let's get the stock charts up on our screen. That would make things much easier. And that's not the set of stock charts we want. Let's try to find the correct set of stock charts, Stevie. Trading out at buck seventy-three, And it's in bar number nine. Bar number nine, Bob. You know what that says? That says we should see a short-term top form between today and tomorrow. And that short-term top should take us back to support. Support on PTRA is all the way back to 139. That's the top of its profile. The ultimate level of support would be a buck 32. It was a bearish structured profile. You closed above it yesterday, the day before. That tells us about a strong momentum move to the upside, but we all have a topping pattern that is also uh, going to form today, complete tomorrow, um, unless that uh, gets taken out. So whatever the highest tie between today and tomorrow is, if that gets closed above on Monday, Tuesday of next week, tells you about a strong momentum move. And that would then tell us, Bob, about a move to 243. But it looks like that move to 243 is going to be put on hold after tomorrow's session and we get a pullback out there. And maybe then you would be taking a look at uh, adding to a position or beginning a new position inside of PTRA. The monthly chart doesn't provide me with a ton of information at this stage here. What it does look like to me is that that this and I'm not even going to go there. I, 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 we're not going to go there, Stevie. So we've got enough information on the daily and the weekly out here. Looks like you're getting ready to form a short-term top. Should pull back to test support. And then if support holds, you should see a move up to 243. That's the top of its weekly profile. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. I've got another question here from Tom G. Tom, nice to uh, hear from you. It's been a, a while. E-T-H-E, Ethereum, is what Tom is writing it about. And the question goes like this. You just exited ETH yesterday. You're looking to see what you think about a re-entry point. Hope all is well. It is been away from the markets for a bit. Well, I hope you're doing well. And uh, thanks so much for uh, coming back to the markets and, more importantly, for uh, uh, sending me a uh, email question. So with regard to Ethereum out here, if it's pulling back, the first level of support for Ethereum that I see is 1115. And 1115 is that green oscillator and change line. So that's your first level of support. Below that would be the market profiles. And the current daily market profiles run from 982 at the bottom, 1013 at the center, and 1044 at the top. If I open up this stock chart on a daily time frame, what I don't see, what I don't see is a topping pattern. Doesn't mean you shouldn't have exited the position, just means I don't see it on the daily time frame out here. So no guarantee that we get that pullback. When I look at the weekly time frame chart for Ethereum, 
What it is doing is it's uh, trading above prior swing points. You already know that. Looks like it wants to target the 1354 level. That's its next TD9 count breakdown area. It did form a nice road momentum and TD9 count and wave seven bottom. That was back in uh, January of uh, this year out here. So it looks like this wants to head to 1354. Your specific question was looking to see what you think for a re-entry point. And the monthly is suggests that it wants to trade higher, 1901 being the price target because price is above that oscillator and change line. So you want a good entry point. Who wouldn't like a good entry point? And I'd love to give you a good entry point. Can I find a good entry point? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at theory, and we're looking at the 30-minute chart right now that's got a TD9 count pattern. So let's take a look at that, and we'll get back to the spring. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, Bix bag out there. Dow's up 283. S&P's off 11. Nasdaq 100, 192 to the downside. Russell's up 18. Semi's down 84 points. We're looking at Ethereum for Tom G. He's looking for an entry point. He was long Ethereum. Now, I don't have a topping pattern on the daily, weekly, or the monthly time frames out there. So it makes it a bit trickier. Uh, what I'd be looking for is some type of pattern on the short-term time frame, such as I mentioned, there was a TD9 count bottom that had formed out here. This took place at 3.30 uh, yesterday afternoon. We've seen a rally. Not until that bottom gets taken out 
that low, by the way, is a, a 1099. If that were to get taken out, and it could because price is below profiles right now, if that gets taken out, you would then generate an A to B equals CD to the downside with a price target of around 1030 or so, 1030 to 11, 1011 out there. Now, the reason I was looking at the 10 number is because at 1044, it's the top of the daily profile. So the first level of support, Tom, is going to be 1115. Well, on a 30-minute basis, the level of support was the TD9 cow bottom pattern that it, uh, uh, that it had generated here. But beyond that, on a daily time frame, it's 11.15 and below that 10.44. So at this stage here, I would, I'd still sit on my hands and uh, see how that 30-minute chart uh, plays out there. Uh, we've had two consecutive uh, rallies, two consecutive day rallies, so not really a reason. Maybe we're going to get a two- to three-bar uh, pullback. That would be pretty normal. Uh, it looks like three bars, two to three bars is the normal time frame for most instruments as well. Um, so I'd, I'd wait for tomorrow, perhaps on a Monday, to relook at that. So I hope that helps you out, Tom. Thanks much for taking the time to uh, write in. What's the uh, last thing? What can I leave you with? What can I leave you with? And I don't know what the answer is there. Uh, let me look at these 120 minute time frame charts, make sure I'm on the same page. So the 120 minute charts are the ones that are most interesting to me, at least for the ESENQ and the Russell, to get rid of some noise out here. In the case of the ES Mini, price is below support. So it could be signaling to you and I it wants to get down to 45.44. We're below support. We, we broke a pattern on the 120 uh, minute. It was a TD9 count bottom. You're below support, which is profile. So 15.676 is its target. You get below that on 120 minute time frame. And I can tell you, I don't believe we have broken through since the bottom a 120 minute time frame. TD9 count to breakout level out there. So watch that 15, 676, 25 level for the NQ. Mucho important. Folks, stay tuned for great programming. I'll be back with you on Fantastic Friday. Please have a terrific Thursday. Take care. <laughs>